In this video, we're going to talk about our new 26 volt battery brackets for the Alexa series. Everything from the classic, which we have here, up to the LF and even the 65. These are compatible with new Anton Bauer 26 volt batteries, which are available in a 98 watt hour and a 240 watt hour version. The 26 volt gold mount features some indentations to prevent you from attaching a 26 volt battery to a traditional gold mount. The opposite can be done though, you can attach an original gold mount battery to this bracket and we'll look at that later. To attach the bracket to the back of the camera, we'll use the included Allen wrench. We'll align the screws at the back of the camera and align the pogo pins as well, and then we'll tighten them into place. Now before you finish tightening all four screws, you'll want to wiggle the plate just a little bit to make sure that the pogos are in place, and then we can lock it down. Next we can install our battery. This attaches the same way a normal gold mount does. And we can power up the camera. And you can see that we have our battery information displayed here. And we also have a DC input on the side of this, which would be displayed if we were utilizing it. You may be asking, why is there a DC input when the camera already has one? Well, the reason for that is the camera takes the highest voltage source. So if you're using a 24 volt block battery and you plug it into the camera body, the onboard will actually drain first. If you plug it into our 26 volt bracket, the circuit board inside intelligently chooses the DC input, leaving the onboard battery fully charged. It's also available in a shark fin configuration, which is great for swapping between two onboard camera batteries. The OLED display is similar on both brackets, so let's take a look at it on the shark fin. The DC input is labeled as BAT1, and then the two onboards are two and three. You can see that we have voltage information displayed on the two onboards, and we can cycle between voltage, percentage, and runtime by using the menu key. We can then use the menu button to go down to the accessory amps, which right now is set at 3.5. We can change that value to 5 or go back down to 2. This just allows the DTAPs to be monitored and cut off if they exceed the current limit. To demonstrate the overcurrent protection, we have a load resistor that will take 4 amps at 15 volts, and we can attach it to our DTAP. Since our menu setting was 2 amps for the limit, we've gone over that and now we have an error message. To clear the error, we'll remove the DTAP and then push the menu button. These products are all available in our store now.